hello there YouTube and welcome to another short video about oil painting topics. So today is going to be about discussing the differences between using lead white and using titanium white. What are the differences between the two and should you be using lead white or should you be using titanium white? So the first major thing to mention is that lead white is toxic and that's going to be the first no that's going to be the first turn off for many of you for many of you you're going to read the label and it's going to say da -da 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 toxic no way but wait hold on aren't all the pigments toxic to some extent yes uh, every pigment can be toxic if you ingest it uh, cadmium can be toxic if you if you have a habit of eating viridian probably going to be toxic after some exposure to it. If you start eating burnt sienna, that might be a problem. Um, so, don't eat your paints and it's not going to be a big deal. The same thing goes with lead white. So, number one, the first thing is that lead white is toxic. Number two, lead white is amazing to paint with. So, let's talk about the paint handling now. So, first was the toxicity. Second is the paint handling properties, and this is where lead white has the strongest advantage over titanium white. Now I know that many of you don't have access to lead white, so I have an alternative for you. So don't worry if you don't have access to it, there's an alternative. Uh, but now, the paint handling properties of lead white. What is so amazing about the paint handling properties of lead white is if you look on my palette here, there's a lot of transparencies in these color mixtures. And I am mixing a bunch of flesh tones on my palette because, as you know, I'm a portrait artist, so I tend to work on portrait paintings a lot. And there's a painting right next to me here, which is an ongoing uh, large double uh, portrait with many still life elements in it. But this is still unfinished, so this is just hanging out with us at the moment. So, again, back to the palette. So. The palette consists of, as you know, all the colors on my palette, and if you missed the video of the colors on my palette, uh, please see the description box of the video. So, again, you can still see the grain of the palette underneath of this. So, um, that is because lead white handles very, very transparent. And lead white, you don't want to think of it as a transparent color because it isn't technically a transparent color. Uh, but it's nowhere near as opaque as titanium white. And I always say this in the YouTube painting demonstrations, flake white or lead white, um, just, let's just call it lead white, has this uh, property of which you can use more of it without raising the value too much, thus allowing you to have a uh, thicker consistency of paint yet maintain the richness of your colors. Remember that statement there because that's going to be the biggest uh, the biggest pro, the biggest positive, not that this is a pros or cons, but the biggest positive to using lead white. So in terms of the handling, lead white is thicker. It feels much thicker and it's heavier, but it takes more of it to raise the value of a color which allows you to have a very broad mid-tone range in your mixtures. Why is it so important to have a very broad range of mid-tones when you're painting? Well, that's because when you're painting, most of the stuff, the biggest decisions are made in the mid-tones. The mid-tones, especially if you're a portrait artist or any realist artist, realist meaning you're painting a thing that looks like a thing, the mid-tones are going to be the most important uh, value, range, to uh, hone in your uh, subtleties. And without the midtone range, you're just not going to have your subtleties. Now the third most uh, important attribute to lead white is its, uh, its uh, foundation. It's a sturdy foundation to any oil painting. So if your first layer is with lead white, that is going to be a very strong foundation. So there's differences in lead white. So there are uh, lead white that is called flake white, there's lead white that's just called lead white, there's lead white that's called cremnance white, it's all the same thing. Uh, if you're talking about the Dutch process method of creating 
lead white that actually consists of an even more uh, historical procedure which involves getting lead coil sheets surrounding it in manure and basically uh, doing all that you can so that there is as much oxidation, I believe that's the term, that occurs so that the um, corrosion happens. So you need to corrode a lead coil and then it starts to, once it starts to corrode then there's a bunch of lead flakes that accumulate on the side. Once the lead coil has corroded you shake the lead coils apart and then you clean up the, the lead properties that come out of it and then you have the Dutch process lead white which is the absolute most awesome thing you can think of. I have never used it. Uh, it is very expensive and it's difficult to obtain and I, I, I conjecture, I suppose, that maybe that would be an even stronger foundation than just standard lead white that's available in the industry today. So, uh, again, the third thing is that lead white produces a much more firm uh, paint film than titanium white. Hands down, lead white produces a much more firm ground. And you can see it in a lot of old master paintings, a lot of the cracking occurs in the shadows. And if you look at the lights, it's heavy, heavy paint, heavy lead white. There's actually less cracking that uh, happens in the lights. So that's just three pros, uh, three attributes, let's just say, to lead white. Next, let's talk about titanium white. So titanium white, the major property of titanium that's going to be the most important selling point to many of you is that titanium white is non-toxic. However, if you make a habit of eating your tube of titanium white or trying to brush your teeth with it, you're going to run into some trouble. Don't eat your paints and you're going to be perfectly fine. So titanium white, number one, it is non-toxic. So if you get it on your hands and you accidentally grab your coffee cup or whatever, you're probably going to be alright. So, uh, the second most uh, important thing to mention about titanium white is that it is, in general, it has higher tinting strength. So titanium white has a higher tinting strength than lead white. So, if you are working primarily in abstract, or if you're working in uh, 2D, or something where the midtone range doesn't quite matter as much, and you just want a really bright color, a really bright light, the titanium white would be the thing for you. Uh, the tinsing strength is very strong. So it doesn't take much titanium white to raise the daylights out of your value. And then once you've raised the daylights out of the value, you might get the effect that you want. The third thing that's going to be most uh, notable about titanium white is that titanium white is the easiest uh, white to obtain. Titanium white is going to be in pretty much all the art stores. Uh, titanium white is PW6, titanium dioxide. So any pigment PW6 is going to be your titanium white, and you're going to find it everywhere. So it is the, um, the uh, most prevalent uh, white. You, you see it in gouache, you see it in watercolor, you see it in house paint. I mean, most of the house paint is going to be, at least the white is going to be titanium white and acrylic, of course. Uh, among other things, but it, it's everywhere. So it, it's much easier to find. Lead white is much harder to find, especially if you live somewhere where lead white is banned. I'm not even going to go there, but uh, it is much harder to find lead white than titanium white. So titanium white is very easy to find. It's got high tinting strength, and it is, uh, in general, pretty safe to use. So let's talk about uh, is lead white for you or titanium white for you? So if you're just getting started with oil paint, or just painting in general, stick to titanium white for a little while. And if you missed my last YouTube video, I'll have it linked in the description box of this video. And I did speak about a palette that is better for beginners, which is the Zorn palette, and then a step up from that, which is a palette that is also better for beginners, but a palette that you can use for everything. So generalize your palette. Do not just have a palette for people, for pets, for landscape, no. Have a palette that is generalized. So have a palette that you're going to use for everything because you want to memorize, have muscle memory and know exactly where your colors are on your palette because it's like the keys to a piano. You want to, It's like muscle memory. 
You can probably play the piano if you have been doing it for a long time with your eyes closed, if you have a feel for where the keys are. It's like the keyboard, a uh, keyboard on your laptop or your computer. I can type without looking at the keyboard and I know you can too. So it's the same thing, same concept. So don't just have one palette for one thing and another palette for another thing. Have your palette set up for any circumstance. So if you've been painting for a short amount of time, then titanium white is for you. But if you've been painting for, let's say, more than one year, lead white is something that you want to start to uh, experiment with. So lead white is for those painters that have been painting for about more than a year. So if you've been painting for more than a year, then definitely lead white is something that you want to experiment with. Now, if you are a messy painter, like if you get paint all over the place, that is a habit that you can change. So there's an excuse that I hear amongst many art students. I'm too messy for lead white. I get paint everywhere. No, you're not. You're really not. Uh, it is a habit. Habits can be controlled. So there's obviously some other psychological factors that are involved in messy paint everywhere, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get to that because that is not that is beyond the scope of this conversation. But in general, clean painting habits. See, I've been waving this palette all over the place, and there's paint on it. There's paint everywhere on it. You know, but it's a habit. You know where the paint stays, and you know where the paint doesn't go. So. If you're a messy painter, that's not an excuse. Um, that is just not an excuse. You can use lead white if you have the experience. So, if you are painting landscapes primarily, lead white or titanium white are both going to be perfectly fine, but landscape painters might find more advantage to using titanium white in things like skies or rocks or things where you're going to have really bright lights. So if you're a landscape painter and you paint really, really bright lights like that, then, of course, titanium white would be for you. If you're an abstract painter, then titanium white is going to be for you. If you're a realist painter, if you paint representationally, uh, if you consider yourself in the realm of painting things to look like things, then flake white is going to be for you, or also I call it lead white. It's the same thing, okay? So uh, any lead white is going to be what you want to use. So, uh, that should summarize everything. So, now you can answer the question on your own. Should you be using flake white or should you be using lead white? Next, what we're going to talk about is what if I live in a place, what if I live in a country where lead white is not available? So, if lead white is not available to you because of where you live, then there are substitutes, and I'm going to give you the uh, best substitute that I can think of. So this is going to come from Gamblin. This is Flake White Replacement. So Flake White Replacement from Gamblin is uh, very similar. As you can see, it's a very similar to straight up lead white. However, it is titanium white. It's just modified. Uh, it's a modified version of uh, titanium white. So what you want to do with flake white replacement is add the tiniest amount of yellow ochre and mix it with your palette knife because flake white is actually a little bit warmer. So lead white is actually a little bit warmer than titanium white. Some could say a lot warmer. So um, add a tiny bit of yellow ochre into your gambling flake white replacement and that's going to be the best substitute that I have found. There's other colors like titanium, um, what is, which one is it? Winsor Newton makes a flake white hue, yet that's not, it doesn't feel quite as similar to um, lead white as Gamblin's flake white replacement does. Another thing to mention, uh, I totally forgot about this, but um, the drying times. So uh, lead white in general dries way faster than titanium white. So this also extends to flake white replacement. So flake white replacement dries just the same as titanium white. It takes about four days if you're painting with regular thickness, regular amount, to be um, completely touch dry. Lead white is typically touch dry overnight, 24 hours, unless you're using um, some other medium in it. Um, but by the way, mediums is another thing I can talk about if you want me to talk about mediums. 
in another short term video like this. So that should cover uh, lead white, titanium white, should you use one or the other, the alternatives, and then zinc white. Um, just zinc white uh, is okay to use maybe in the third or fourth layer of your painting, but zinc white creates a much more brittle paint film in general, so you don't want to use it in the beginning of your um, oil painting layer. And if you're using titanium white, um, you can use zinc, uh, zinc white in the third, fourth, or fifth layer, but you don't want to use it heavily uh, because zinc white does have this uh, brittleness to it. So um, you can go, you can get by just fine using titanium white. And there's some ateliers, there's some classical art schools that get by just fine just using titanium white. So you do not have to use lead white. You don't have to use flake white or anything like that. But um, it's definitely something worth um, worth noting. And obviously, don't forget, uh, don't forget when you're handling paint tubes, wear gloves. Even with titanium white, uh, even with the non-toxic paints, uh, when you're opening the paint tubes, just wear gloves because paint gets everywhere. That's just you know a, um, a normal thing is to wear gloves when you're applying paint onto your palette. So like I said before, this painting is a painting that I'm currently working on in the studio. It's a large double portrait, unfinished, so I'm not going to get into any close-ups with this, but it's just going to hang out with us for a while. So um, that concludes everything. So remember that the topic for this video was uh, suggested from one of you in the comments. So if you are interested in uh, having me talk about a uh, painting related topic that I can talk about here on, on YouTube, uh, just feel free to write a comment. I will go through and read the comments of this YouTube video. And if I see something that you want me to answer, um, such as, is there a palette for painting dogs? Uh, I'm going to respond to that on, in, in the text version in your comment, but a palette should be consistent of everything. You should set up your palette not just for people, not just for landscapes, not just for still life, for everything. So the palette that you use for portraits involving interiors and things like that should be applicable to every other uh, subject matter. Um, so you know that, that would have been too quick of a response. But lead white was a nice and rich uh, topic to talk about. So if you have something you want me to talk about that's mediums, that's the fat over lean concept with oil painting. There is the layers of an oil painting. There is the brushes involved in oil painting, solvents, subject matter, how to improve on your oil painting, uh, all kinds of topics that I can talk about in this short term format. Uh, format. Please feel free to comment it down in the comment section of this YouTube video. Once again, thank you all so much for watching my YouTube channel. If you are interested in taking your art education with me further, please check out the link in my description box to my online classes. As I do teach online classes, I uh, upload a new lesson, I stream a new lesson for my online students twice a week on Wednesdays and on Saturdays. I also have other benefits such as painting with me in a group setting on Zoom every Tuesday or painting with me one-on-one -on, -one on Zoom. I also offer that. And I also give students feedback on their artworks through a weekly virtual classroom video where students send me images and I give students up to three pointers per artwork that they send to me. So, that being said, thank you so much for watching. I wish you the very best in all of your artwork. And I'll see you on the next one. And here are some oil paintings created by my students taking my online classes. You can see a variety of different projects that they have worked on. And again, these are just a few samples of the many paintings that have been created in my online classes.